Hello, this is Channel Easy Self Host. In this video, we are going to host a generative AI tool ourselves on a cloud platform with very low cost. The app we are going to run is Stable Diffusion, which takes text as input and generate image content, and it offers other features like image to image generation. AI application like this generally takes hardware like high-end GPU, which are very expensive if you don't have one for other purpose already. Alternatively, we can run a server with GPU on cloud platform like AWS. The lowest cost we can find on AWS is half a dollar for an hour, which is $12 for one day, or nearly $400 for a month, which is still a lot of money. But AWS costs you per second. So if you're only gonna use 30 minutes a day, five times a week, it will cost you five bucks per month, which is a reasonable price. But you need to launch an instance every time and terminate the instance after use, which is not a good user experience. And if you ever forget to terminate the instance, you're going to receive a large bill. So what if you can just type an URL in your browser? A GPU server will be created automatically for you and when you are done using it, the server will be automatically terminated. That will be a good solution. I tried to find a project like this, but then decided to develop one myself. At the high level, it works like this. You need to deploy a launcher server on a low-cost machine. And when you make a request to this server, it will deploy a high-cost server with your app. And it will also create an alarm that will terminate your app server when it is idle for some time. Then the launcher server will proxy all your requests to the app server. Then let's start hosted on AWS. As a prerequisite, you need to check if you have the quota for GPU servers. You can try to launch a g4dn.xlarge instance. If this is the first time you are using it, you are likely to hit this quota limit. But don't worry, you can fill the form to request for some actual quota. For example, I requested 16 CPU limit for G instances. You can just say you need GPU to run some apps. The request will be approved in one or two days. Once you have that, let's first configure some permission for our launcher servers. Go to IEM in AWS console. Under roles, let's create a role for EC2 service. Let's first add all EC2 access to this role and then search and add all access to your CloudWatch service. And then we can create this role and name it something like EC2 Manage EC2. With the IAM role in place, let's also create a security group to allow traffic to the launcher server. Under EC2 Security Group, let's create one for our launcher server. For inbound rules, we can allow HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH for all the IP addresses. So we can access and configure it anywhere. For the next step, we're also going to need security groups for our app servers. For security, we can allow all TCP traffic from only our launcher server. You can find our launcher server security group in the source field. Note that we're going to need this security group ID later. Now let's create our launcher server instance. Choose Ubuntu as our operating system and t2.micro is enough. Choose or create a key pair and select the launcher server security group we just created. Under advanced details, let's also select the IAM role we just created for the launcher server. And then we can launch our instance. Before we connect to it, let's associate an elastic IP address to it so that its IP address won't change over time. Make sure to associate the IP address to your instance after created. Now is a good time to point our domain name to this IP address so we can use it in the browser. After setting up the domain name, we can then connect to our server. This time, we are going to use the connect feature in AWS console. In the terminal, let's first clone my repository for this project. The URL is github.com slash easy self slash launcher. In the repository, there is a setup script which can help us set up some dependencies like Docker. Let's run the script using the command sh setup.sh. It will run for a while to download and configure Docker engine. To run this launcher server, I've prepared some configuration in this .env file, and you can just use this configuration. It has stuff like 
the script to run stable diffusion on the app server, the AWS region, and also the username and password for the launcher server. You can of course modify this file to change the configuration. Let's also take a look at the Docker Compose file this time. This time, we're going to use Caddy as our reverse proxy, since it can get HTTPS certificate for us automatically. I've left some config here to be filled when we're running the Docker Compose file. Then let's find these files. The first thing we're going to need is the security group ID we just created for the app server. Let's copy the ID for this security group. Back to the command line. Let's first fill in the security group ID and then the KPR ID we created for the launcher server. And finally, our hostname for this server. With these environment variables, let's use docker compose up d to launch our launcher server. The HTTPS will be enabled automatically if you point your hostname to this IP address. Everything now is ready and let's go to our hostname. Fill in the Username and the password we configure in the .ena file. The launcher server will let you wait for some time until the application is ready. The stable diffusion generally takes a while to launch. You might also see this service unavailable page if the launcher takes longer than expected. Just wait for it to refresh by itself a few times, and the service will be up. Now we have the stable diffusion web UI loaded. We can try typing some prompt to generate an image. Please refer to their website for how to use this web UI. If you leave this app unused for a while, you can find it terminated in the CloudWatch console. You can just refresh the page to recreate this application. That's all for this video. Please consider subscribing for content like this. You can find the repository in GitHub and the link is in description below. Thank you for watching.